Oh, probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. So should he do his standard, like, laminate, laminate? I, I call it a laminate schedule. You say lay up. Uh, like, pretend that's not there and just do what he sh he would normally do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, do your normal. Whatever you normally start with. Usually my first layer is the night glass. So does this take its place or should I just start adding on top of it? No, add on top of it. What you've put on there so far really doesn't count for any, any part of your layup or any part of the weight mm -hmm. in your project. It is so minute. All it's doing is giving you a fine weave surface to go against the, the PVA bag. Okay. So to get a true comparison, you're going to do it just what you normally yeah. would do. Pretending this isn't even here. Pretending that's yeah. yeah. And then we'll see. Yeah, I just think that's what they call And then we'll we'll have our comparison to compare to his. Mm -hmm. so, I'm just thinking that that might be easier when you start cutting the whole pattern. Now that carbon gets funky, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that. Well. Um, I'm just more about the drill bit too. We okay. need to think about getting you guys crown point bits. We're doing that center hole. All the holes. Yeah. Center hole probably yeah most important one. Mm -hmm. They just cut the carbon so much better. Huh? Center yeah, your center hole. But don't you set up the post? Okay. okay. Just, we, just just the four hole pattern and the side hole. Okay. Well, we might. We'll find out. My that center hole looks splendid. Yeah. Just because it didn't get enough resin? Yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. I'm going to take this out of the way. it. Why is there a O-ring out of this? Out of a locker. A locker. Lock a Manifold. Didn't need it that day. I spy something. Gonna have to watch this. This is gonna be a carbon fiber, and then the other one's going to be, I, I guess you would call it a hybrid. It's called mm -hmm. spectrocar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it work the same exact way pretty much? Pretty much. Okay. Oh, actually I didn't know that. Instant adhesive? Is that on the... Oh no, that's the... And thank you for sharing that with me, because if you've got a card that I can use on that, I, I really want to experiment with it. It's nice, I mean, it's nice to always avoid all glue, even this and that, but there's certain places when you're doing things that if you don't have something else holding it, you don't get it to work. You know, I, I've pretty much learned with controlling, I make donuts out of this. Yeah. So that I can wrap, and I have learned how to contort myself and hold graphite tape and fiberglass and... I look like a spider up here, <laughs> spreading my hand out. What? I remember you guys. We did. I remember you guys making them. You poured them. I refined them. That's what we used to get them as from you guys. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had to order any for a long time. Yeah, you did make another one, didn't you? Hard. Yeah. I know that. And that'd be overkill. Which is this gray stuff, which is really no, I'll play with it. I'll, I'll, Hmm? I'll play. I'll do play that. With it. Play with it. It's a. Yeah. So you can play out what you have to do. Yeah. Fit head or something. You can put some grease on it. Yeah. Because with the carbon, that's just not too much. Yeah. But this stuff you can heat it, pour it, and lay it down. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think I've done in the past and try to get, get this to lay somewhat evenly is like a get a piece of twine and tie it like a little loop, loop about that mm -hmm. many or so, set it on there and let it uh, let the fold of the material sit uh, outside the last fold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we got the one on the inside, the one will lie. Mm -hmm. Well, we did have some small stuff. Yeah, that was issues with that or try to. So I'll just do what I know. As long as you, you know, use a, a string that will saturate with your resin. I actually went into one facility and the technician was using monofilament pitching line. I'm like, do you realize that's plastic? <laughs> I'm like, you know, whatever you're, if you're using that for string, that's not going to hold. He thought he was using 20 pound test line. That'll work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had him buy wood, so if this was yours, you could take one of those pieces to a place. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, and I went, I went in at one facility, and I kid you not, where this young man is being very stingy with the graphite that he's putting on here. He's stopping it right at, you know, the, I, I have gone in and seen them take the graphite six, eight inches below their model. I, and I'm like, you're doing what? I said, have you seen the, the per inch cost of that material? They, they don't come, like when I tell them what my bagging material and the release ply and the breather and everything cost a square foot, even the car, yeah, I buy pre frag $6 a square foot. Uh -huh. Adds up. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Nick's in our accounting department, yeah. but he's interested in this as well. Adds up. It does. I've got to be using that glue real gingerly, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that holding as well for you, Michael? Yeah, the first layer did. Okay. Actually I've got more out there when that can's gone. Yeah. We can eliminate the Super 77 so altogether as far as I'm concerned. throw that can away so it doesn't... Let this Get back to Rob so he knows because this is. I'll, I'll, I'll. Oh. We got it on video. Now, I can show you a way to eliminate the adhesive on what you just did. Okay? If you take your, your layer of graphite, make it twice as long as what you want, and pull your first layer of graphite down, and take a string and tie it off around your center post. Can you collect it? Not yet, because you don't want you don't want graphite against graphite. You put a you put a layer of night glass in between, right? Mm -hmm. So after you tie your graphite off, pull your cylinder of night glass down over the top of all of your excess graphite that's up here. Tie it off, reflect your night glass, and then reflect your second layer of graphite. You will have achieved the exact same thing without having any adhesive in there whatsoever. What kind of strands? I just use my sewing thread from the sewing machine. That would be way too heavy. Okay. Like a, an take, upholstery thread? Yeah. Heavy? Yeah. You can I also have take, some of that out there in black. You can also take a piece of your sheer nylon or nye glass and you can use it because it'll saturate with your resins. And there's no sizing on it. On your sewing thread, watch and see if there's any no, sizing you're on right. it. you're right. When I would use that on panels, yeah, the engineers at Lexus did not like that. Right. But the, yeah, the thread can't have any any sizing material right. on it, a release agent. That right there would work. Yeah, this would work fine. And they're talking to the I'm industry gonna, I'm, all the time, and they're looking at me, and they're like, we use it every day. I'm like, no, right. you do. But they've <laughs> never seen a failure. Bingo. Well, they have. But what they've done to compensate for it is, let's say, add another layer yeah. or two of graphite. Yeah, make it heavier. You're, you're making it heavier. You're also costing a lot more money in your fabrication. Sure. Instead of resolving the problem that and caused the issue. And more glue in the heavier laminate. Yes. I knew these guys used it out here for, but I guess I didn't know. They, I knew they used Super 77, but I guess I was unaware of what we were you just spray this with Rob's coming and ask me for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to take mine off and spray it? Yeah, I might as well. And I mean, I know when I first came here, you guys had some 
it's like somebody was taking Super 77 and putting their own label on it. We had different versions of it, but it was all the same thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but I brought the infusing in. For I am so good. Like so if you've got the info on that on where I can get well, it. Well, I, I, I can, like, if I get a card from you, I'll, I'll send okay. you the link. I don't have any cards with me. Okay, well, Bob's got your... Yeah, yeah he's got mine. I know, I, kind of, <laughs> I got his kind of We'll spread yeah. the information around. I Absolutely. And so you even know by your hand how much pressure you're applying to this distal unit. So, mm -hmm. so uh, one thing I was thinking of trying with this one uh, was leaving it loose so there was extra space underneath there, letting the resin kind of get into it, and then through the bag, kind of manipulating this until it tightens back down later okay. on in the process. All right, we can try that. So All right. That one Good day to experiment. Yeah. Now let's go so ahead and, and have you got two more bags lined up? Yes. When you pull the bags down, we want to seal it against this edge. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Because when we start pulling vacuum, we want the vacuum to go down through these holes when we pour the resin in. Not around the outside edge. One of the hardest things to do with this lamination is to not touch it when we first pour the resin in very difficult because you want to reach up there and grab it and get started. Right. But we need to wait a few minutes and... and it's got to flush all the air out of the two things. It's got, yeah, exactly. Okay? Right. And my socket will not come up, especially the first day that we, yeah, no holes, the first day that we laminate today, but the epoxy resin will not be as hard, as rigid in my socket as the graphite will. Okay. But by tomorrow morning, it will be pretty set. Yeah. Epoxy takes a total of up to 24 hours to finish curing. Okay. But the key is, is that within two hours of laminating, we've got it off of the model and we're working with it. We're polishing the edges and with no fear that it's going to alter or change shape. All right. Okay. It's set up enough for that. Yeah, I know because, you know, when we do the vacuum, we expect, well, this tooling may not be that problem, but we would expect some shrink, say, using co-poly. Right. But not going to experience it with this. Okay. This should be the shape that you want when you're done. Okay. What size bag did you start out with? Eight inch? I think it's eight inch. Yeah. I would have done a six inch on this size. Only because I want my bag up here to have some length to it. To hold my resin in. Right. The reservoir. Yeah. You're not gonna have much of a reservoir up here. Ooh, and you also didn't have the end. It's on the edge. And yeah, it's on the edge. The heat gun and the heat gun. That's good. That's all I got. 